Hello darlings! In this week's video I have finally gotten around to making over our sunroom. It has been a room that I've wanted to renovate slash makeover for a really long time. It was just a bit drab and dreary and I wanted it to be a space where I could study for uni and relax and sew and just an overall a nice space to be in. It wasn't a place that I wanted to spend a lot of time. It was in desperate need of a clean. It ended up being a dumping area where we would just put washing that needed to be folded. We had part of our pantry in there because we didn't have a pantry in our kitchen. So it was kind of all over the place and in desperate need of a makeover. Our sunroom had pretty outdated 1970s wood paneling, which I'm pretty sure wasn't even real timber. So I contemplated removing the paneling and after a little bit of research, I realized it was actually gonna be more complicated than I thought. Um, to remove the wood paneling, you have to heat it to melt the glue so you can remove the paneling off the wall but there's also a risk that when the paneling comes off, part of the wall can fall away as well. So I decided to abandon that idea. I wasn't going to remove this paneling. So instead of removing the paneling, I decided that I could paint over it. And the color that I chose was a soft buttery yellow so that it would kind of lighten up the whole room. I mean, it is a sunroom, so it's very appropriate that I chose the color that I did. So to help with the direction that I was going with decorating the sunroom, I created a Pinterest board so that I could group all of my ideas together. So throughout the whole process, I could keep referring back to it to help with different color schemes and pieces of wood furniture that I liked and curtains and other pieces in there that I thought would tie the room together and make it really inviting and homely and lovely. Some of you may know I did a 1950s kitchen renovation and for that I chose a specific decade but for the sunroom I wanted it to be a little bit more open and not have just one particular decade. I just wanted it to be open but with an overall vintage style. So as you can see from the before the room was an absolute mess. I was using a dining table to do my study. I didn't have any proper storage for uni books or all of my sewing stuff, which included a lot of material. There was just stuff thrown all over the place and it ended up being a dumping ground for recycling and washing that needed to be folded. It really just wasn't a space that I wanted to come in and study or even sew. It was so cluttered and it made me so stressed every time I came into the room. So it's time to fix this room and make it much brighter, more vintage, and somewhere I want to hang out and relax, as well as sitting down, focusing, and getting into some uni work. So I got straight into the huge process of clearing out all the clutter from around the table. So, because I stored all of my material in baskets and kind of little bookshelves underneath the table, it was awkward to get to and just a bit inconvenient overall and quite untidy looking. So that was something that I really wanted to make sure that I improved on when I renovated the sunroom to have a proper storage space for all of my fabric. Unfortunately, once we cleared out the sunroom, I had turned our living room into a dumping ground temporarily. So it was very messy in there, but we just had to deal with it until I could move everything back into the sunroom. I thankfully had James to help me out with removing the table because, oh my gosh, it was so ridiculously heavy. It's so heavy. Okay. Well, are you able to just let's just practice the squat and pick it up? Are you able to do that? <laughs> no. Yeah, I can. I can do I it. I don't think you can. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Can you? Wait, I can't do it with my left hand. <laughs> Come on, lift, lift it up. I'm lifting it up. Once we got the heavy tabletop and bottom out of the way, I rolled up the mats. One of the mats was badly sun bleached and underneath the mat, the carpet edge had completely disintegrated and little rusty nails were poking out from under the carpet. It was pretty bad and I didn't know exactly what I was going to do to fix this problem without ripping up the entire carpet, which I didn't really want to do if I didn't have to. The next day, I removed the curtain rod and curtains so that the room was completely cleared out and I then got straight into washing the walls with sugar soap. While doing work on the sunroom each day, I was always checking Facebook Marketplace to see if there was any furniture I might need for the final room. I had this little writing desk in my imagination for what my dream office sewing space would look like and I found the perfect one and we went and picked it up straight away. Once we got it home, I put it against the wall to see how it looked and I couldn't have been happier. It was the perfect size for the room and it didn't take up too much space.
The next day I prepped the room for painting and laid down some drop sheets. I had chosen a soft buttery yellow for the walls because I thought that was very appropriate for a sunroom as it would lighten the room up. But before going in with the colour I needed to give the room a prime. I started out by cutting in along the edges and priming over the grooves in the wood as they were a lot darker than the rest of the panels so I wanted to make sure I had an even base before going in and painting the whole room yellow. And I must say this was actually a very tedious process because it felt like I wasn't progressing at all with the room and I was just painting stripes. We had been having extremely hot days and it was actually really difficult painting in these conditions. And as I continued painting into the night, we thankfully had a much needed thunderstorm. Finally, after what felt like ages of cutting in, I was able to start using the roller and priming the whole wall. The next day was pretty much the same old thing, just priming the walls and I still hadn't finished cutting in by this point. I was trying to finish sections so I felt like I was actually getting somewhere. Because the sunroom connects to the laundry, I wanted to continue painting so the whole room looked seamless. Because there were some areas in the laundry that only James could reach, it was really great having his help. Good morning, it's a new day. My hands are still a little bit sore from using the paintbrush and the roller, and my back is really sore from rolling on the walls with the same movement up and down, up and down, all around the room. I was a bit worn out, so I had a bit of a break this morning, but now I'm getting straight back into it. We have a tiny bit more of priming to do. We've got to prime this bit here, but we have to remove the shelves to prime. And then there is also a little section above the cupboard up here that we need to prime. Apart from that, I think I might leave that to James because it's a little bit of a tricky spot to get to. It feels like it's been forever before I can finally put the actual colour onto the walls. We had to do two coats of priming and because I had to paint between all of the little grooves and obviously doing all the cutting in, it just took forever. It was such a task and I'm just so happy to finally be at the stage where I can paint I can paint the whole thing, but I'll probably have to do two coats. Then I can move on to furnishing it and I can't wait to get this room finished. And finally I got to start painting the yellow on the walls and it was so pretty. And just like the priming, I did the cutting in first, which just takes forever. After spending far too long cutting in, I moved on to using the roller and started to progress much more quickly around the room. I worked into the night again because it honestly felt like there wasn't enough hours in the day for me to get enough painting done for me to feel like I'd progressed. The next day we headed off to one of my favourite vintage markets in Melbourne. My goal was to find some lovely pictures to put on the walls to make the room feel really homely and lovely. After getting back, I scoured Facebook Marketplace again to check up on some more furniture. And I found this gorgeous olive green vintage armchair, but it was way too far away from us. Instead of moping about that for too long, I got straight back into working on the room and I started cleaning the shelves so I could remove them and paint the rest of the wall. Some of the shelves were warped from the weight of books over the years. I didn't really want to keep them there because I think it made the room just look a little bit untidy. And things would just end up being dumped there if there was no proper storage. So to fix that problem, I removed the long shelves on the bottom and I planned to replace that with a nice chest of drawers or some sort of storage cupboard that had drawers so I could neatly put away all of my fabrics and little bits and pieces. I only had a couple of small patches of priming and painting before I could finally go over with the second coat of yellow. My hands were so sore, you can't really see on camera, but it felt like I was on the way to developing blisters. My hands were cramped and stiff from holding the roller and cutting in all day. I took up the drop sheets and I removed the remaining mats on the ground and much to my dismay, I discovered the horrific state of the yellowing carpet underneath. It was pretty bad and I didn't know what I was going to do because I didn't particularly want to rip up the carpet because that could bring up more issues because it is a very old home and I wasn't really sure whether there was any asbestos insulation beneath the carpet. If I could keep the carpet intact, I wanted to just leave it alone. Instead of stressing out about the terrible state of the carpet, 
I moved on to getting the rest of the room organized and furnished. I put three shelves up on either side of the window into the kitchen because I wanted to keep those there so I had books in the final room, but I didn't want to keep those lower shelves because that was where I wanted to put a cabinet. We had actually found a lovely carpet that we had been storing in the garage and I thought that it may be the perfect size to cover the stained carpet. And guess what? It was the perfect size. So I had another look on Facebook Marketplace. I measured up the length of the window for a curtain and I had a look at a few antique chest of drawers. I also needed to change the length of the curtain rod because it was far too long on one side. It was never the appropriate length for the window. So I sawed off the correct amount and then screwed it back together. We made a quick trip to Ikea and we picked up some lovely green curtains and also a plant because I thought it'd be nice to bring some greenery into the finished room. I hung the Ikea curtains in the window and they looked so lovely because they were sheer and still allowed some light to come in so it felt like a sunroom still without completely blocking out the light. I was a little bit undecided as to what sort of storage or chest of drawers that I was going to have in the spot where the bookshelves were so for a couple of days I was on Facebook marketplace just scrolling to try and find the right drawers for the space and I ended up coming across this lovely chest of drawers from the 1920s or 1930s that just happens to work perfectly with the space. It was actually really funny that we were able to fit this huge piece of furniture into the back of our small car. We've been joking the whole time that we've been doing the sunroom because we've been carting around furniture. It's honestly like James's car is Mary Poppins bag because you can just fit huge furniture in there and you would never think that it would go into such a small car. It's hilarious. <laughs> but anyway, we brought this amazing piece home and it fit perfectly in the room. I have something very exciting that we picked up. We went and got it after we picked up the chest of drawers and this is maybe even more exciting. Oh. It's a 1950s lamp and it is beyond glorious. I've never owned such a statement piece of a lamp and it is just so beautiful and the light is just perfectly diffused and it's everything I could have hoped for or wished for or dreamt for. This is our chair from the living room. I've just put a blanket over it for the moment. There were some really nice armchairs on Facebook Marketplace, but unfortunately, one of the ones that I really liked, I couldn't get the exact measurements for, so I didn't know whether it could fit in the boot of the car. So at the moment, that's on hold until I can get the measurements. So for the time being, I just have our kind of our old chair in the corner um, until I can buy one that will better suit the room in maybe a nice green or a pale blue. For the moment it works and it's exactly what I wanted, just a comfy chair in the corner so I can sit down and do my hand sewing and just have a nice casual spot when I'm not doing study. I'm just going to hem the curtains now and put up a couple more frames. I've held off putting up the frames because it was hard to know where to put up the picture frames when I didn't have the room fully furnished. You know, when I didn't have the lamp up, I didn't know what was going to be hidden from the giant lampshade that it is. So now that I've kind of got everything in its place, I'm going to start putting things up and hopefully not ruin my gorgeous walls too much. We also just picked up some hooks from Bunnings and I'm going to put them next to the window over here so that I can hang up my sun hat when I go out and garden. So it's really exciting, it's coming together so well and this is just a room that I can feel just at peace in and be able to do my study and not have a huge cluttered mess. It's going to be so good having these drawers to put all of my fabric in because I have a lot of fabric and it's going to be nice to kind of hide away all of my clutter. So I finally had all the furniture in the room and it was time to put up the frames and do finishing touches. I had a beautiful picture of my grandma Hilda, who was actually a nurse. So I wanted to have her above my desk to inspire me as I continue doing my nursing studies. 
At a later stage, I want to frame these two old papers that were actually from a dancing competition and included feedback on my grandma Hilda's dancing in the 1950s. And now with the room finally done, here is the grand reveal. I'm so happy with how this room's turned out. It's just so lovely to be here, even just sitting on this chair, not doing any work, and just looking out the window and looking at the beautiful flowers in the garden. Um, it's just so peaceful, and it's totally transformed this space by painting it yellow. I, I couldn't be happier with the end result. There are a couple of things that I still wanna do to the room. I don't think the pipe is very attractive, just right behind the chair. So I am going to do some sort of draping of a pretty fabric behind. So it kind of looks like a, a feature corner or feature wall here. So that will completely cover up the pipe and that issue. And also this chair is not the chair that I wanted to have on the corner, but it's doing the job, it's functional. So I'll keep this for the moment um, until I find the perfect chair to go in the corner and make the room complete. Honestly, I wanna spend all day every day in here because I love it so much. It's just so lovely being in here. I do also wanna do a little bit more to the laundry. I didn't forget about it, but that wasn't the focus for this video and for this renovation. It was mainly so that I had a study space. So I will do a curtain and maybe do a little bit more painting um, in the laundry. But for the moment, I'm just so happy that I have this room finished. I can do my study, I can sew, and yeah, it's just a space that I love being in. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and until next time, bye! <laughs> yeah, so, so, so this, yeah, my little boy, like it. Blah, 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 blah. Why is this so heavy? How the hell are we gonna get this to the garage? Can we just get out the chainsaw? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs>